box ain't you? And today we are making our cover um, and our junk journal that's going to be less than $10 total. So, and I still got a shadow over here. Let's turn. That helped a little bit. So, that's what we're going to do today. I've already gessoed it. I got some little spots, but I think those are going to be covered. I decided that I'm not going to totally paint. Hey, Joe, that I'm not going to totally paint them. It's going to get another la layer of paint on it, and then I'm going to put napkins on top of it um, and seal the napkins because that's the I found napkins that I like that were really pretty that I think are going to go with the whole journal instead of me trying to paint some kind of an artistic cover on here. So that's the plan for today is just to get the cover done. I also trimmed the cover. Hi, Amber. I trimmed my cover down um, and I do have that material set aside. So this is going to be our junk journal cover. And then, like I said, I've already gessoed it. I am not doing anything to the back side right now because that's just going to get glued to our cereal boxes. And so what I'm going to paint it with is this tan paint and pink, which goes good with the napkin background. So if anything peeks through, I'm good. So I'm just going to, and this brown paint is homemade and it's rather watered down. So I'm just going to squirt paint. There's no rhyme or reason to this part, y'all. And this doesn't squirt its ease. Oh, that's a big dot. Let me move some of that somewhere else. And there's no mistakes. Whatever happens, happens. It's going to get covered with napkin. I'm just trying to get a good base down. Okay. And I had paint scrapers. I've also been cleaning my desk off. Um, okay, we're going to use a brush. Can't find my paint scrapers. I probably put them up because I was cleaning. So now I'm just going to kind of spread this around. And I'm not trying to mix the two colors. I just kind of want it to look kind of marbly-ish. And if it turns out to be mainly the, the background brown color, I'm okay with that too. That sounds like a plan, Joe. Well, we got out of town company and where my table is set up is my kitchen, which is fine when it's just me and Nick. But with Anna and her granddaughter being here for a week, I'm going to be trying to find another place to film besides in here at this folding table. So I was trying to get stuff straightened up where I can move my table, which my table is very much cleaned off. Once I'm done with this today, I can pretty much fold it up, put it away. I don't have as much pink as I wanted, so I may go back and add a couple more little dots of that once I get this all covered. I know that I'm over length on this, and um, I figured that was fine. I don't mind cutting some off. I don't have enough paint on here. And I'm going to add more pink, so I'm not going to worry about putting pink on here right this second. Just get it good base coat. And Amber, this is going to be kind of like Katrine's napkin stuff that she was making. Um, except I did not paint the back because it's going to get glued down. Okay, now, so I can get a little bit more pink in here. I am going to just squeeze out some little dots here and there, and then just spread them. The napkin has a lot of the brown color and pink. And I'm going to place the napkin on here because I do have to have it. I don't have a napkin that's this long. 
to where the seam is not where this seam is. This is going down the middle of the spine of the book, and I don't want there to be a seam there. So I've already planned out how I'm going to lay the napkins down. Right. I've been meaning, I, I, when I did the last video, I said I would get this one at least done this weekend. I don't know what else I'll get done while they're here, but I wanted to at least get the cover out of the way. So if anybody's making it with me, they can get their cover done before the next live, where we start working on signatures. Okay, to me, this is fine because it's going to have napkin over it. So I'm good with how this is looking. So I'm going to take the heat gun and we're going to dry it real fast. And it's a thin layer of paint. It shouldn't take too long to dry, I hope. And I see that we have somebody else. Welcome. Thank you for coming. We are painting a journal cover. And I see white paint specks. I don't like it. Well, that didn't work so good. That'll work. I played around with a stray pair of blue jean material and kind of experimented and stuff to see. And that's when I decided I was going to try to do the napkin because the way the blue jean, the way it was coming out with what I was doing with the paint, I just wasn't happy with. And I'll show you that. I mean, it's not that it looked bad, because it didn't look bad. I'm going to save it and use it for ATCs or something. Maybe a small, small journal. Because it didn't look bad. It's just not what I wanted for this journal. And I laid my covers down and made sure... That, every, that the material is cut correctly, everything's going to fit. It's still wet. I might even want to touch it. I can see that. Yep, it's still damp. And it's amazing to me how pliable that this material stays. Even though it's painted, it's still very pliable. And I'm using regular craft paint. Nothing, no fancy kind of paints. Nothing like that. Went from the back side a little bit. Okay. So this is dry. I'm going to let it cool off. Oh, it's not quite. There's a wet spot. Hang on. But I am going to let it cool off before I apply the Minwax. I use Minwax polyacrylic. Um, it is water. I made sure that it's water soluble. It says cleans up with soap and water on the front of the can. Mine is a matte finish. Or semi. No, it's matte, I think. I don't want my cover to be really shiny. I just want it to be sealed well. Now, 
Now, if you do want a shiny cover, you can always use gloss or semi-gloss on your covers, and that will make them shiny. I'm going to let this cool before I put the min wax on it. Um, I don't want to put it on a hot surface. And let me grab some paper towels. They are not handy. To wipe my brush off on. Okay. But the polycrylic is good for polymer clay. It's good for this. It's good for sealing so many different things. And that's why I use it. Because polymer clay is finicky with what you use to seal it. So, it does not play well with everything. So, I already had the polycrylic. Okay. So, I'm going to now put the thin coat of polycrylic on here. And I don't think Katrine let this get dry. I think she laid the napkin on it while it was wet. But I am going to put a generous coat because I need the whole thing to stay wet while I'm working from one side to the other. See, that feels like it's already drying, but my lights are kind of hot. Okay, so we got that coated, and then I'm going to place my napkin. Very gently. And I'm just trying to get it smoothed out where there's not wrinkles on it as much as possible. I mean, if it wrinkles, it just adds to that look. So, I'm not going to really worry too terribly much about wrinkles. I've got to move the min wax out of my way on this side. Right, now, the main thing with this is making sure I have no gaps between these two pieces of napkin where paint's going to show through. I don't mind if they overlap a little bit. I just don't want there to be a gap. Okay. Now, I'm going to very carefully and very gently put a sealing coat on top. Hi, those of you that came in. Welcome to my channel. We are making a journal cover today out of blue jean material. And once I get this layer dry, I am going to trim these edges back. Now this gets three layers on top of the napkin to seal it very well. So this is layer one. We got a layer under it. And we now have a layer going, the first layer going over it. And there's my seam, and I'm going to pounce a little bit over that. I don't want to tear the napkin, but I want to make sure I've got good contact all along that blue jean seam. jeans go all the way over okay and this one pretty much goes to the edge on this side and I do have a little leeway as far as the edges go as far as cutting it down a little bit more so that's I wasn't really worried too much about that either I left it a little bit longer
And this coat, you have to kind of, I'm not pressing real hard. This is a very soft brush. And I'm not pressing hard or anything because I don't want to rip the napkin. I am giving it a little bit of pressure, though, but just not a lot. Because you don't want any air bubbles. In this case, air bubbles are not your friend. I don't guess they ever are. Okay. I think that looks good, so I'm just going to set that aside. And we're going to use the hot glue gun again. Hi, Debbie. And Ann. Thank y'all for coming. So we're going to give this a quick dry and make sure it's good and dry before I put the next coat on. Now the next coat that goes on here is a coat of the varnish, but it's got glitter in it. So we're going to have a little bit of sparkle on our cover. If you don't want the sparkle, just add another clear coat. I like things to have a little sparkle, a little bit of glitter. And I just use some of my min wax and put glitter in it. And this is going to be the back of our book, so I'm not really worried about that seam right there. It's on the back cover. It's still wet, still tacky a little bit. So I don't know when I'll be live again. I am going to try to go live at some point during the week, but we do have out-of-town company. And the next live, we will be working on our signatures for the journal. And it's going to have four signatures in it. I see somebody else just came in. Hello. Thank you for coming. And I can still see where it's a little wet because of the way the light's hitting it. <coughs> Excuse me. Especially here on the scene, it looks wet. We got an air pocket under there. I think I got it. I have air pockets in several places. No, I don't think I like that.
and that may be the varnish and paint bubbling underneath so I'm just gonna press it back down okay and I'm gonna let it cool off again I don't want to apply any it's it's dry that is an air pocket okay where's the exacto what I'm gonna do is slice it just a little bit and get the air out of there And I am going to go ahead and put just a dab of varnish right there where I squished it. Pat it down. That should get the air out. Well, no, it still has air trapped in. I don't know why there's an air pocket there. I think I am making my air pocket worse. There we go. I think that got it. Yep, that got it. Okay. Looking to see if there are any other ones before I put another coat on it. And there are not. Okay, we're good. So if you do get an air pocket, just take your craft knife, pop it. I put some more... A varnish on it and then pressed it down till the air pocket was gone well it's still I'm gonna keep pressing that till it's really gone okay that's good okay I think before I put any more on here I am going to trim off this excess napkin from my material just so it's out of the way. I am not throwing my napkin away though because it's still useful. Make sure I'm not on the plastic mat underneath. And this side still feels a little wet right here on that corner so I'm going to go back with the heat gun in just a second okay the reason I didn't trim my napkin first is inevitably if I do that it's not going to fit right so I trimmed it as much as I dared and this is not even stuck down good. There we go. I trimmed it as much as I dared before putting it on. I got better scissors than those out, so I'm going to get the really good scissors. I don't know why I grabbed that little bitty pair. Probably because they were the handiest. Okay, it is not perfectly trimmed, and I'm not worried about that right now. So I'm going to turn it back around. I am going to trim this off a little bit better. If I can get the scissors in there. Okay. So. I think it's good. Everything seems dry in this corner where I stuck it back down. So. 
I'm going to take my brush out of the clear min wax. And for the glitter, I'm going to go straight to the glitter. I, however, will not go back from glitter to clear because I don't want my clear contaminated with the glitter. And we're going to do another thin layer. And this time it's got the sparkle going. Oh, that looks really pretty. I like that. I'll tilt it. Y'all, you, can you see the sparkle? That is, it's just got a nice shimmer to it. That's really pretty. And all I used was white glitter, ultra fine glitter from Walmart and a little bit of the gold ultra fine from Walmart. I didn't want a lot of gold in it because I may want to use this on other projects because I'm going to have some left over. So I didn't want to put a lot of the gold. But I wanted some gold. Okay. Well, we're going to do the same thing and try to make it to where I don't have any kind of brush strokes or anything like that showing, you know, ridges. And go down my spine. Okay. This needs to go in water now. So it gets the one coat with the glitter. And it's still wet. But I'm trying to get it to where y'all can see the shimmery shimmeries. And we're going to heat gun it. Thank you, Joe. They came from, um, oh, uh, Tanya. Tanya sent me these, and they are perfect for this journal. And so this, I, I only had two, so I'm using both of them. But they came from Tanya in my happy mail. Pop it. So I like them because it looks like there's roses in the background that are real light. So you've got background like the leaves. So you've got background images as well as foreground. And I really like it. And it goes well with what I'm planning in the journal. And that's why I'm saving the napkin pieces. I can use those on pockets and tags and, you know, other things to tie the cover back into the journal. Thank you, Debbie. Oh, still damp over here. All these coats on here take a minute to dry. It'll probably be cheesier Wednesday before I go live again. Um, to do the journal signature part or to start this, the signatures. Because we're not putting the cover on the journal yet. I just wanted, this was the easiest thing to start with as far as getting it made. And back to our scene.
It's still a little wet over here. And the great thing is, like um, Katrine said, when this is dry and all sealed, like right now I can feel the glitter after another coat. I will, if I do still feel glitter, I will coat it again. I want the glitter to be sealed in. But what she was saying is, this will be completely wiped. You can wipe it off once this is cured. It becomes wipe offable. It's like waterproof and spill proof. And so the cover, even though it's material, will be protected. Okay, I'm gonna cut that back off, and I can feel the glitter. So, if the next layer doesn't get it to where it's smooth, I will put another layer on it. I'm hoping y'all can see all the glitter and shimmeries on there. And it's very pliable and movable, which that's just amazing to me. That as much paint as it's got on it, it is denim fabric, and it's got a napkin, and now polyurethane, it's still so very flexible. And very pretty. Okay, let me get a drink of coffee. Check chat. Yeah, Joe, I miss talking to y'all, and that's why I was worried, because I hadn't heard from you in a while. And I'm so glad we all got to get together and, and chit-chat again. I really enjoyed that. I'm just making sure I have all the glitter off my brush because I do not want glitter in the regular Minwax. It has no glitter. Okay, I don't see any more glitter, so we're good. So this is the third coat, and I may put a fourth coat if this does not put the glitter where I don't feel it when I rub on it. And I want it to be a smooth cover. And if it's not smooth, I will put another coat on here. But Amber, we know we were talking in her room about it working on jeans. It will work on jeans. I just didn't coat the other side like she did because I'm gluing it down. And I want to make sure that the material itself has the contact with my cardboard that I'm using. So I just didn't cover the other side. But it will work and it's very pliable still. Which is great. And this gives us a whole new way to make covers, y'all. You can use anything now to make a cover. As long as, you know, material, it's got to be a cotton weave fabric. And your napkins. Options are endless. And now I'm just going to make sure I don't have brush strokes and that kind of thing. And the back of it seems to have more glitter than the front for whatever reason. So I may redo the front with a glitter coat. I think I will, real quick, add a little bit more glitter only to the front cover part because it doesn't seem to have as much glittery. So I will need to put another coat on here, and I'm not worried about that. It just didn't grab as much glitter when I did it. for the back cover or the front cover i definitely want my front cover to be as pretty as the back cover there 
There we go. Now it's a glittering. And shiny and shimmery. All that. Katrine calls that being kissed by a unicorn. Oh, yeah, Joe, that will be very cool. I can't wait to see what you do with that. So we're going to give this a quick dry, and I'm going to make sure I don't feel the glitter that I just put on there. If I do, I'll just put another thin layer on it. I'm really liking how this is looking and how it feels. Oh, that would be cool, Joe. My napkin does have some wrinkling going on, and it looks really cool. Um, it just adds to the texture. I really like it. I'm not going to worry about it. I like the way that that looks. And that, I may go back from the back side and see if I can get rid of that air bubble. Because it's not going from the front. And it's really not going to hurt anything that it's there. And the main part of this is this seam getting dry. Because that's where the bulk, uh, that's the bulkiest part. But I did measure and that's going to be in the center of the back of the book. So. That is where that will fall. And I'm thinking that since this is going to be our front cover here, um, I may put something on there. Instead of just leaving it open. Still a little damp over here. Don't forget to thumbs up, everybody. The YouTubies likes it when we do that. So... Nothing exciting has happened here in the last few days other than our out-of-town company got here a day early. <laughs> That's always fun. Um, Hubby has gone to the grocery store because he put that off until the last second, and now she's here, so yeah. So he'll be coming back in shortly with that. This is going to need another coat on it over here where I put that glitter. So I'm just going to coat the whole thing in a minute. Um, where I put the extra layer of glitter, it's going to need another coat. But I'm going to wave it around a little bit and let it dry. 
because I can feel that it needs more. This one, you can't, it feels completely different. That is so amazing to me how pliable that is. But it, I'm letting it cool off real quick and then I'll put the other coat on it. Now what I could do is take one of these roses that I have left over and put it here in the middle and decoupage it down. And I may fussy cut one out and do that, but I'm not going to do it today. Today, we're just going to do this. That's an idea, though. Um, I could take one of the leftover roses and put right here, fussy cut it out and put one here. And that would fill this in a little bit. And I may do that as opposed to putting something else on there. Okay, we're going to go back to the clear. Let me get my brush out of the water. Let me make sure we get all the glitter off of it again. And I'm going to go with another thin coat. Over the whole thing. And this is a really thin coat this time, y'all. I mean, it's going to be a super thin coat. I would rather put a lot of thin coats on here than a couple of thick coats. Your thicker coats can dry weird. I have had that happen. They can get ridges in them and all kind of weird stuff that you really don't want. So I'd rather put a bunch of thin coats than a couple of really thick coats. So this one is going to be really thin. I'm just going to spread this out. I mainly want to make sure I get my glitter sealed in good. I have some extra going on there. Okay. And we're going to use the heat gun again and get this dried off. I really like how this is turning out. This is going to be really pretty with the coffee dyed papers. Hi, Brenda. How are you? So with my coffee dyed papers and the, the things I chose to download online, um, as far as public stuff goes, it's going to all go really well together with these napkins on here and this cover. And this is gorgeous. And these napkins are really pretty. This is actually the back when you well no it goes flip this way because this is top and bottom so yeah this is the cover and this is our back over here Now, it does take 24 hours for the um, polyurethane to completely cure. So, once this is on here, 
I'm going to set it aside flat just so it can cure overnight. And then it will be completely washable, wipeable, everything once it's cured. Kind of like making your own vinyl in a way. Okay. And that's a little bit on the tacky side, but I'm just going to let it sit here. Fan. <laughs> Hi, Rebecca. Welcome. How are you today? I'm just shaking it to try to cool it off. And I like it. It feels a lot like vinyl. And I'm sure if I had covered the back side of the blue jean material, it would feel more like vinyl. But this is cool. It's not cracking. It's not bending. Well, it's bending, but it's not getting any cracks in it. That is awesome. So now it just needs to cure, and then we have a journal cover for our journal. So my napkins were free. My blue jeans were hijacked off a pair of husband's holy blue, holy blue jeans. I already had the men wax, um, polycrylic. That's the most expensive thing if you have not got anything to varnish with that you're going to put money out for, and that would make it go over the $10. For the journal. But. I already had that. And some most people have some kind of a varnish. They, in their house. Or something they can use. To varnish with. And then I'll, I coffee dyed my papers. And everything. And if you go back to the first video. It's going to tell you what the materials are. To make this be an under $10 journal. All together. So this is our second video. We got our cover done. I like it. It's got sparkle. It's very flexible. And I still may decoupage a rose to the middle of that. And I'm just not going to do that right this minute. This, I'm... Okay, hang on, y'all. I think hubby's back and the dogs are going to cry. Stop. Fox. Fox. Stop. And he is back, so it's going to be a minute. Um, what size I'm going with? I'm using six by nine on, or no, nine by twelve envelopes. Hang on, just a second. Oh, which one am I going to grab? I need to mark where I get it from because I've got this all figured out in here. Okay, I'm using the six by nines, folded in half. Which is great because an eight and a half by 11 inch sheet of paper folded in half gives you a little bit of an edge here. Also, on my nine by 12 inch pad sketch pad I bought from Dollar Tree when I coffee stained it, it's going to fold in half and be perfect. So, my cover is a little bit bigger than that. Um, only because I wanted to have a little overhang. And so my cereal boxes are 10 inches by, I don't know the width on those. I'd have to remeasure. Oh no, Rebecca, you made a bigger mess. I'm trying to get my mess cleaned up because my where I craft is in my kitchen and this is a folding table and I have to get it out of my kitchen since we have house guests or we're going to have more people here for dinner every day for the next week. So I have to remove my table and my camera set up and everything for the next few days. Um, but that's what I'm using. It's a nine by it's gonna be a nine inches tall by six inches wide pages and the cover. Let me put this back before I forget where I got it from in my stack of stuff. The cover. 
covers are it's a Fruit Loop box, seven inches wide and ten inches tall. And I oh um, hang on. one and a half inch spine. So this, this was the insert of a calendar because I messed up cutting up the Fruit Loop box. So this is how, of course, this won't be on the outside of the cover. This is how they're going to lay out on the inside of the cover. And this is going to hide where all my sewing happens on our paper towel roll. So I'm going to do all my stitching through here. This, of course, once all my stitching is done, it'll be on that side. This is going to hide all of that. And then this is going to go on here. These are going to attach on the sides of my cardboard like this, where they're bent. So that'll allow for it to open and close. The backing will go here and the other cover will go here. So that, and this is just a paper towel roll. Kind of used the toilet paper roll idea and blew it up a little bit. Hi, Amber. I'm glad you're back. Oh my gosh, Brenda. That would be a mess. Yeah, I noticed too, Joe, whenever I clean, there's always a bigger mess in the meantime of cleaning than there is when I'm done. But that seems to be the way I organize stuff. I have to get it all strode out. First, I'm going to cut these big bright lights off. What's the eek for Rebecca? Oh, Brenda, the other Brenda. Okay, <laughs> never mind. I figured it out. Oh, baby, it would have been horrible. Sam, I was saying that, you know, when we were, I don't know if you were here still, but when we were in Katrina's video the other night, we had mentioned doing this on blue jeans. It does work. And I did not seal or do anything to the back side of the jeans on this. And this is very flexible. So jeans will work. And it feels wonderful. Oh, gosh, sugar's horrible. Oh, yeah, that's I've been claiming all my um, hijacking, claiming, snatching all hubby's old holy jeans. He don't throw them away. I live with a pack rat. So, of course, even though he can't wear them, he don't throw them away. So now, thank gosh, he doesn't throw them away. I have material to work with without having to go out and buy material. And the napkins just give us so much area to play with. This is cool. I like how flexible this is. But, yeah, the napkins... We can do whatever we want with this pair of jeans and make it look however we want. I have a carpet cleaner. Um, with two dogs, we need a carpet cleaner. Not that they're not good dogs, but they have accidents here and there and that kind of thing. Now I really think he's back because now she's whining and everything. So I don't know what the first barking was over. But so, well, I'm going to get off of here because when he starts coming in, they're going to go really nuts. But we got our cover done. It'll be Tuesday or Wednesday before I come back live. Um, oh, Joe, I had one. Gizmo went out half the time, and half the time he didn't. And Chip Zoos are stubborn little dogs. He was the most stubborn-headed little animal. Loved him to death. 
but they have a stubborn streak. Okay, I'm waiting. I gessoed it first, Amber, and then I painted it white because I was planning on, hang on, let me find my scrap material. So this is one I worked with. It's just a little piece. Let me turn one of these gigantic bright lights back on. Um, hang on. Foxy, please stop. Stop. I painted, I gessoed it, painted it white, and then I did paint on it pink. It was this pink, a purple, and a blue, and I didn't like that, so then I put alcohol, I sealed it, put alcohol ink, I did a lot of stuff to this. It is cool, it's just not what I wanted my journal to look like. So I'm going to make ATCs or something with this, or a small journal, it could be a small journal cover. So, but yeah, I did the gesso first, then I did a coat of white, I did two coats of white paint, because I remember Katrine saying something about two coats. So I did the two coats of white paint, and then from there you saw what I did today. I put the coat of these two colors on it, just random, splishy, splashy, because I, of the background of the napkin. And then from there, the rest. So I kind of modified what Katrine did just a little bit. Um, but yeah, and that's how it came out like this. I will, Joe, probably be after like seven or eight my time. So if that's okay, I'll message you. And before I laid the napkin down, Amber, I did put a thin coat of the polyurethane on it, the, the Minwax polyacrylic. And then I put the napkin on top of that before it dried. Very carefully, like Katrine did, napkin over that. And then I put a very thin coat of varnish over the top of that. And then I did the glitter coat and then another coat. And my what's going to end up being the front wasn't as glittery. So I put another glitter coat on it and then just did another coat over the whole thing. Okay, cool. Yeah, I thought it was kind of cool that we're going to be swap partners. Thank you. Yeah, the, and I'm using Minwax Polycrylic. It did say on the label that it is soap and water cleanup. So it's kind of what she's using. I use it for my polymer clay, sealing that kind of thing. Um, it just works. It's very friendly with polymer clay. Some things aren't, and you use them on your polymer clay, and in a couple of months, it goes tacky. And it will disintegrate the polymer. Minwax does not do that as long as it's the polyacrylic that's water-based. So I've just used the water-based. And here it's not dry completely right here in this little crack. So that's just what I did. Um, I already had that polyacrylic on hand. So... Mine is a matte finish, so it's not real shiny, although it kind of looks shiny. I think that's the glitter, but it's not, a sh it's not, but I didn't want it to be like glossy, shiny. I mean, I have stuff that'll make it look like that. Um, I just didn't want it to look that way. Thank you, Amber. So I'm going to let Katrina know that I have used her technique on my journal cover. We are done for the with the journal cover. Does anybody have any other questions or anything? And Katrine's video is way cooler. I think she, I don't remember what, Amber, do you remember what the name of that video was? I don't remember below. We did, Amber. That was great. I mean, it started out dark, and then when she was done, the sun was up in her wet. was so cool. We got to watch the sunrise in Denmark. Right. Something about fabric was what it was, Sue. You were in there, I think. 
I agree, Joe. Well, I need to get off of here. I got to get some dinner started and I got to finish cleaning up my crafting area. But I wanted to come on and do this and it'll probably be Tuesday or Wednesday before I can go live and we can start working on our signatures for the journal. So far, I'm really happy with how it's turning out. And this is just the cover. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll be just as happy with the rest. So, I'll talk to everybody later. Joe, I'll message you when we're done. When I can get a minute to, to, to message you later. Thank you, Amber. Thank you, Debbie. Bye-bye.